Hello there again. I wanted to go back to the implied volatility Python code we did a couple months ago and address some issues that people had trying to simulate, um, they're trying to calculate the implied volatility of in-the-money options. Uh, the program crashes on occasion and what I wanted to do, to do, because this channel is more on numerical methods and scientific computing than on than computational finance per se, is to try to go about and figure out, try to go and figure out what's causing the issue. Now in this case it's really it's pretty easy to figure out. Now this is kind of more, one of those things that's more of an art than a science. Um, so I just kind of wanted to step through my thought process and how I would debug this if I didn't know what the actual issue was that was causing this. Now in this case I wrote the code years ago uh, so I know exactly what's going on and it's not really an issue to fix. But I just wanted to just kind of run through again how I would go about figuring out uh, what the issues are. Now just to list out a few potential uh, reasons that some sort of numerical code is failing, uh, I can think of a few few things just off of the top of my head. Now the first uh, potential thing, obviously the mathematics could be wrong. Math in the sense that the equations you're using in your model are not entered correctly or you've derived them incorrectly or something. Something is fundamentally wrong there. Uh, Black-Scholes model is pretty simple, it's just one equation, so we're going to assume that that is, that is correct. A second possibility is that a lot of these numerical methods, you have to build these complex matrices and, and interact with them in various ways. And sometimes a code bug can be um, such that an element is set wrong or a row is swapped or something something fairly subtle with the matrices involved are, is going wrong. Uh, again, this is a very simple problem, so that's not the issue here. So we're just going to assume that that's not the issue third possibility is the numbers you're feeding into your model don't make sense. In the case of a physical problem, they can just be unphysical numbers. They just do not make sense. Uh, you have a mass and somehow it's coming out as a complex number either initially or it's, it's, it's being calculated as such. Um, <clears throat> that happens to be what's causing the problem here. We're entering a number that financially does not make, does not make sense. Now those are just a few kind of semi-obvious things off the top of my head. So let's just uh, jump into the code and, and get going. Okay, so this is the code that I have uploaded to GitHub that's uh, <clears throat> part of that first implied volatility uh, video. And these are the parameters involved. So we had a strike price of, a stock price of 100, a strike price of 105, and, and so on. So if we go to a Python console and we run that, we get an implied volatility of about 30, call it 37%. So that's all well and good. But let's go back to this uh, code here and let's change the strike price to 90. So I'll save that, go to the console and run. So now we have an issue. We're getting an error. And so our implied volatility sigma here comes back as not a number and there's a whole stack trace here and we can see the initial error that causes this is a divide by zero here in the calculation that, that, that updates that root finding step. So we have a divide by zero error. So it's a function value divided by vega plus the, the vol from the previous step. So what's probably happening is we're getting a zero vega. And now let's go back to our code and think about this a bit before we actually get into the, the mathematics and how to actually debug this. Let's think about what these numbers these numbers represent here. So k is our strike price. We have a 90 strike price a hundred dollar stock price. So this option is a call option is ten dollars in the money. So if the cost of an option is the sum of its intrinsic and extrinsic value, it has at least ten dollars. It has exactly in this case ten dollars of extrinsic. Uh, ex, I'm sorry, intrinsic value. And I have the call price here set for two dollars and thirty cents. So if that were actually the case, and you could actually find this in the real world, you could just buy this option, instantly exercise it, and sell out the stock, and collect the difference between that $10 of intrinsic value here that should be here, and your stock price, or your call price of $2.30. Obviously, that's not a tenable, tenable position, and that type of thing is, you're not going to find it. That's a long-winded way of saying, in essence, what this error is showing you is that there's something very wrong with the numbers you're entering into the code. This cannot exist. Now, having said that, let's pretend that we don't understand that and we can't figure that out. And this problem is a lot more complicated uh, than that. And we have to do some sort of other debugging work here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just rename this file. Um, I don't know. Let's get original and call it debug. 
dot pi and just edit that file called debug. Okay, so let's get rid of um, the stuff we used for Apple in that original video. And uh, we don't even need this stuff here where we actually figure out the implied volatility. We can add it back in later if we actually want it. So let's just delete the whole thing. Okay, let's go back to the beginning, zero. And let's add in uh, the NumPy library. So import numpy as np and also let's uh, import the plotting library so import matplotlib.pyplot as plt excellent and now let's go back down here and let's plot out what this function actually looks like remembering from the root finding video we're trying to find the value of the call price as predicted by the black shoals model minus this price here c0 so let's plot out what that function actually looks like uh what are we doing here we are editing okay down here so let's create a variable called sigma and that will be np.lin space and let's call let's just uh, have it go from 0 to 1 so uh 0% implied volatility all the way up to 100% implied volatility. And let's stop insert mode and save it. Okay, moving on. And something looks funny here. We need an equal sign, don't we? That kind of helps. Uh, now we need to have the D values here. So let's just cheat and copy this. Paste it in here. Uh, D1 comma D2 equals this. Now there will be an issue here with the implied volatility running from zero because uh, you have this in the sigma here in the denominator so this will give a div divide by zero error and will give you an infinite value for, for D1 but um, <clears throat> NumPy will just uh, substitute in an, inf an infinity uh, for that value so uh, for the time being we can live with that. So let's create a variable called C and that will be our call price Let's just do another copy paste job down here. Put, and there we go. So now let's just plot out what this function looks like. Let's go plt.plot uh, c minus c0. And, oh, come on, Kevin. Sigma is our x value, c minus c0 is our y values and plt.show and let's run it and I realize I spelled debug wrong here oh well so python d supposed to be debug but it's not spelled right so this is what our function looks like now you notice here there's an issue we're supposed to be looking for the root of this this function so where this thing crosses zero and it never crosses zero so yeah, that's the source of our problem right there. We're looking for a number that doesn't exist. Our function never crosses zero, therefore we cannot find the point where it crosses zero. Now, like I said in the intro, Black-Scholes model is really simple, so we're just going to assume the math is right. That means some of the numbers that are going into our assumptions uh, have to be th the source of the problem. And the strike price is, is obviously not, not an issue. The stock price is a known number. Uh, the risk-free rate could potentially be an issue but it leads to uh, the, the option price being the main, the main culprit here. And so let's go back and play around with this a little bit more. And I'm going to close, close this window, go back to my code. And sorry guys, but the fact that debug is uh, spelled wrong is really annoying me. So debug.python, rename the thing debug.python. Okay, so let's go back to our uh, findval program and play around with this price a little bit here. So let's, uh, where's C0? Let's move this to $8.50. Python findval. Ah, uh, where are we? Still an issue. So let's go back and make this how about 1050. 
Oh, there we go. That works. And so now let's go back to the debug script because I want this to be pretty obvious and, and, and clear. And go back to our prices here and let's plot that function if this were eight dollars and fifty cents. Uh, Python debug. Again, we see this function here has no root. It never gets lower than like one point something, and we're looking for when it crosses zero. So now let's go back to the script, and we'll change this to ten dollars and thirty cents. There we go. We see that this code uh, works now, and this function does indeed cross cross zero. So that was a very long-winded way of saying what we said at the beginning. The issue was with the call price and the fact that the intrinsic value was was much less than uh, the ten dollars that it should have been. Um, <clears throat> so if we go back here uh, again, these numbers are all hard to really screw up too much. We know what this the stock price is. We know what the the strike price is time we know we know we know the risk-free rate and you get the call price from the option chain so this guy could potentially give you an issue uh in the case that we just saw uh in the mathematics you can get a a problem if you for some reason you entered exactly zero time and this would give you uh an infinity here uh if you had entered a negative number for either the stock price or the strike price uh, if, the, if the argument of this log is a negative, this is going to give you an issue, so you may have to make sure you enter these correctly. Uh, I mentioned that the risk-free rate might be a problem. That's probably not the case unless you entered a very large negative number, in which case this exponential term might blow up because negative times a negative is a positive, and it's a large number. This, this you know, becomes exponentially large. So... Um, in real code, you do a lot of error checking. If you were to deploy this for some sort of uh, real application, you'd have to do some error checking to make sure you're not feeding um, feeding the math functions uh, strange numbers. But yeah, uh, the issue here was with the uh, with the call price. So yeah, just a quick video on how I might go about debugging a program like this. You know, the obvious things. Do the numbers I'm entering make sense? Is there some quirk in the equation, some subtlety like a divide by zero error that's coming in? If so, what's the element that's going to zero? Are there logs and negative numbers? Are the things blowing up to infinity? If so, why are those, you know, why are those numbers happening? Is it something I'm inputting in? Is it a math error? Is it a coding error? Uh, and so on, you know, and other things like uh, plot plot out the function that you're trying to solve for. If it's a multi-dimensional uh, problem, that that may may or may not be possible. But can I plot out some subspace of that problem? Uh, can I visualize the shape of the matrices involved? Um, things like that. So yeah, I just wanted to put together something quickly uh, on this. I'm not going to update the code on GitHub. I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, yeah. So great. Talk to you guys later. Bye bye.